Hello, welcome to another screencast about limits using the limit laws in algebra. This is number three in the series of four, and this one's got kind of a crazy, intimidating, awful looking limit here. Uh, limit as x goes to five of, my goodness, look at all those fractions, one fifth minus one over x, all of that over five minus x. Well, this is just about enough to make anybody crazy, and uh, the first thing we gotta do is just get our heads straight and say, look, the first thing I need to do is evaluate, or try to evaluate this limit by putting in x equals 5, and then I will deal with the fractions uh, if I need to. So let's put in 5 for, for x and just see what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky. Probably not, otherwise there wouldn't be a screencast. And sure enough, there's our friend 0 over 0 again. And remember, that's undefined, so this tells us nothing about the limit. The limit might go on to exist, it might not go on to exist. We have no idea based on the 0 over 0 result. So I guess I have to sort of just suck it up and get into these fractions a little bit. Now, uh, dealing with fractions, the main thing is just to keep your head in the game and don't freak out. Uh, fractions uh, break the problem down into something smaller. Like the first thing I might do is see, you know, I really have buried underneath all this stuff here, I really have just a very innocent looking uh, fraction arithmetic problem here. So I'm going to focus on that first. I'm just going to take the numerator of this fraction and combine these two fractions just by uh, getting common denominators and subtracting. And then I will handle the next step when that shows up. So let's go. Uh, limit as x goes to 5 of something over 5 minus x. Now, <clears throat> again, what I'm doing here is I'm going to perform the subtraction that's in front of me up here on the top. Uh, to subtract fractions, of course, I need common denominators, and the common denominator is going to be 5 times x. So the first fraction is x over 5x, and the second fraction is 5 over 5x. Now let's just carry this forward as far as we can and uh, see what happens. Okay, It's not really necessary to see all the way through the end of the problem at this point. we just got to put one foot in front of the other. So 5 minus x on the bottom. And on the top, I've got a compounded fraction. I have x minus 5, all of that over 5x. So I think the next order of business would be to simplify this compounded fraction a little bit so I don't have a fraction on top of a fraction, but just one big fraction. And how do we do that? Well, um, take the fraction on top and write it kind of in more vertical form like this. I am dividing all of that, the stuff I just wrote, by 5 minus x. Let me write that with the old school uh, division symbol just for fun here. And what is that the same thing as? We don't often write that symbol, you know, for algebra. What do we do instead? Well, we take the limit. I'm going to have to carry all this limit stuff along until I actually take a limit. x minus 5 over 5x. Dividing by 5 minus x is the same as multiplying by 1 over 5 minus x, is it not? Sure it is. And now, let me just kind of squish these two things together into one fraction. By squish, I mean I'm going to multiply, of course. I'm going to multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. And so I have x minus 5 over, and I'm going to keep these separate for right now, 5x times 5 minus x. Okay, so this is now a very, a, a little bit better looking fraction, maybe a lot better looking fraction than this thing. And moreover, I kind of noticed something here. This and this are almost, but not quite, uh, common factors. Uh, x minus 5 and 5 minus x. Uh, if they had, we're kind of going in the same direction here with the subtraction x minus 5 and x minus 5, for instance. And I could just cancel them out and be done with it. Uh, however, I have one extra step. I can still cancel them out, but I have one extra step I need to do. And that is, um, I need to get these uh, in the right order, because order matters in subtraction. And the way I'm going to do that is to factor out a minus 1 from the top. Now you might be thinking, I didn't see a minus 1 to factor out, but you can always factor out a minus 1 off of something. It just reverses the sign on everything. And that's precisely what we want. Because look, now I can cancel off the 5 minus x's, and I'm left with a negative 1. Okay, so that's a trick. If you ever see something in a rational function like this, and you have a term up here, and the exact same almost term down here, except the subtraction is reversed, just pull off a minus 1 factor and you're good. All right, so now look what I have. Uh, I have the limit as x goes to 5 of negative 1 over 5x. And this I can evaluate by direct substitution. This is going to be negative 1 over 5 times 5, which is negative 1 25ths. 
there's my uh, answer there. So the key algebra step here is uh, really just a problem solving step more than an algebra step and that is just break the problem down into simpler parts and work on one at a time. Uh, so if you have a one of these compounded fraction sorts of problems, look at the uh, littlest fraction in the picture and do the arithmetic that's in front of you and then uh, just keep working and keep simplifying. Again, uh, beware of the zero over zero result when you put the number in the first place. This time it turned out the limit actually existed. Good luck on these. Have fun.